Good evening. It doesn't really matter who wins general elections anymore. They're pretty much the same. I mean, after all, Rishi Sunak wanted to make sure that in 10 years' time, 25-year-olds could buy cigarettes legally and 24-year-olds couldn't. That struck me as being fairly bonkers. Uh, now we have Sakir Starmer. Uh, and a leaked report, uh, said to be originated by Sue Gray, but no one knows the truth of that, appearing in the Sun newspaper this morning, suggesting there'll be an outdoor smoking ban. Yeah, that's right. You won't be able to smoke in pub gardens, outside pubs, outside sports venues. Now, of course, this all began really back in 2006, when the Blair government banned indoor smoking, even in private members' clubs. It meant a direct 20% loss of revenue for pubs and working man's clubs, and has been quite a major contributory factor to the closure of 7,000 licensed premises. This particular proposal would, I think, literally kill off the traditional pub for good. They might survive as restaurants, but not as pubs. But Sir Keir seems pretty keen on all of this. Here he was speaking this morning outside the Elysee Palace in Paris. No, we haven't got it. OK, no problem. So, what he basically said was that smoking's a terrible cost to the NHS and a burden on the taxpayer. I've never heard such nonsense in all my life. The last time I looked, tobacco revenues were four to five times the cost of treating people for tobacco-related diseases on the National Health Service. But that's not really the point. The point, actually, is, is this going to work? Are we really going to have smoke-free Britain by 2030? Well, let me ask you, are we going to have drug-free Britain? Oh, no, sorry, don't mention drugs, because they're illegal, and we've lost the war on illegal drugs, so we'll now fight a war against legal drugs, and it'll start with tobacco, and it'll move on to alcohol, and goodness knows what else. Will we have smoke-free Britain by 2030? Give me your thoughts, Farage at gbnews.com. I don't think we will for one moment. And I think the danger is this, that you overtax something, you overregulate something that is a legal product, and you drive it into the hands of criminal gangs. In fact, there's evidence that that's already happening with very high tobacco taxes in our country. Now, the most anti-smoking country I've ever been to is Australia. You virtually can't smoke anywhere. And a packet of fags is 35 quid. Uh, this has had some pretty remarkable consequences. I'm joined down the line, live by Adrian Falk, Australian media commentator. Adrian, every time I go to Australia, I'm just astonished at the cost of cigarettes and, and the, the level of prohibition. Um, what's the impact been on the licence trade in Australia? Sure. Good evening, uh, Nigel. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me. Well, the smoking bans kicked off here in 2016 in Sydney and obviously then followed through around Australia, different states and territories. And while there was a little, um, you know, uh, quieter times with pubs and outdoor bistros, really here in Australia, it's life as we've known it. It's kind of like our lockout laws that happened here in Australia in 2014 uh, when they stopped uh, live venues and uh, pubs, uh, even in the, allowing people to enter at, from 1.30 in, in the, in the uh, morning serving alcohol. So here in Australia, you know, while we may be a bunch of convicts, they've definitely put a leash on us quite tightly. And um, <laughs> hearing the news about, uh, you know, these, these uh, you know, proposed smoking bans, um, we, we've been living like this for nine years. So most Australians have been doing the maths. You know, if you're 18 out now and about, you know, it wasn't, you know, since you were nine that you could, you know, um, you know, your parents could light up while enjoying a meal at a bistro. So really people don't know any different anymore. I do believe that, yes, it did have some impact um, yeah, initially. Okay. But, okay. Yeah, okay. But, but, really but, 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 you know, Adrian, come on. Australia's problem is not that it's full of former convicts. Australia's problem <laughs> is it's, it's full of former prison officers. It's always the view that I've taken whenever I've gone there. But the consequences of tobacco prices have been astonishing. And I've been telling the British public, or attempting to tell the British public, about this today. You know, the criminal gangs in Melbourne don't bother with cocaine. There's no point. There's no money in cocaine. The money's in cigarettes. And this incredible gang warfare that we've seen, 97 firebombings of shops and of people's houses 
related to the tobacco trade. Isn't this a classic case that you overtax something, you push it beyond the reach of ordinary folk, and the serious criminal gangs take over? Look, here, with, you know, I, I think the cost of living crisis in Australia has definitely taken a toll. We're a year behind everything else, just like when COVID happened in Australia. Um, you know, our lockout laws, um, you know, our whole country was locked down. So I feel like the taxing of things and regulations of cigarettes, and you're right, cigarettes here, I mean, I had to do a Google search as a non-smoker. They're very hefty for for anyone that's smoking and um i believe that you know obviously there may be bigger issues at play there in terms of like um the tobacco wars that you have been seeing in the headlines particularly in melbourne um that have been happening but to to get back to the point about you know will pubs die in the uk and are people going to stop drinking no i don't believe so um, you know, obviously, mm. people always like going out, socialising. Well, and uh, Adrian, sorry, sorry. all I can tell you is, all I can tell you is, I went for a quick drink in the Westminster Arms before coming on this show. I've been going there thirty years. If I can't smoke outside, I'm never going back. Adrian Falk, thank you for joining me. Sir George Howarth joins me, former Labour MP and junior minister under Tony Blair, and Dame Andrew Jenkins, former Tory MP joins me as well. George, we were talking earlier about the fact that there is a black market already in cigarettes in Britain, isn't there? Yeah. And, you know, it is a problem, and I don't deny for one minute that it won't be a problem if it's restricted even further. But my own view um, is that, and I'm a smoker myself. Yeah. I don't say it proudly, but it's a fact. It's your choice. Yeah. But what I have noticed is that since the ban came in in its original form, I've cut down because there's fewer places I can actually mm. smoke in. And I'm not unhappy about that. And the other point I would make, and I've realised, is that my smoking, whether it's outside a pub or somewhere else or even in the street, subjects other people to the consequences of my smoking, not to the same extent. No, but no, no, come it on. It certainly has an impact. If you're in a pub garden, you know, nobody else has to share that smoke. They don't have to, no. but you go, say, say I go with my wife. I smoke, she doesn't. That's her choice. She, <laughs> well, that would always be my choice. Yeah, well, but she, come on, George. But, but she is... would object to it, and, and she's got a fair point in doing so. Well, she married you, George. I mean, that's her choice. <laughs> that's a different issue. Andrea, I mean... You know, we saw all this in Richard. I mean, I made, I made the point at the start. Mm. It's almost irrelevant who wins the elections. The, the uh, you know, we know what's good for you. Mm tendency from both parties is very strong, isn't it? Um, it is, um, especially with the more centrist wing of the Conservative Party. But to me, um, I mean, I don't smoke. I've never smoked, never even tried mm. it. Mm. I think you made a valid point earlier, actually, Nigel, why we're not tackling the major drug problem in the country. We're not, we're not even discussing drugs. No, exactly. I can't believe it. Uh, and also, um, I just feel that Red Starmer's at it again to assert control <laughs> over the nation. I mean, I, I believe in freedom, and if people want to smoke, that's up to them. And I can't see any problem people smoking in a pub garden. Well, hang on a second. You were a Conservative Member of Parliament yes. under a Prime Minister yes. who wanted to make anybody under the age of 14 yeah. never, ever, ever legally be able to buy the product. No, but look, I'm... I'm when you're in a political party, I think George is the same, actually, <laughs> that you don't agree with every single policy. I no. mean, you've seen I've been quite a critic of whoever the Prime Minister's been, really, and you can't agree with every policy, but ultimately mm. I'm a Conservative, but I don't think it's very Conservative to bring those kind of policies in. That's my view. George, most pubs have become restaurants, you know, all over the country. They have to serve food, to, and that's fine, but you lose something very special. I've always, and I'm not joking here, I've always believed that every pub is a parliament. The people gather in a pub, they talk about local issues, they talk about national issues, they talk about international issues. Uh, many times I've had my point of view changed by a conversation that someone's put forward in a pub. They're an important part of community. They're important for lonely people. I just worry they're not going to survive this. Look, I've had some, like everybody else, mm. some interested and sensible conversations with people in the pub over the years, yeah. 
Frankly, I've also had conversations well, with people who were completely bonkers <laughs> or not really in the state well, to have a debate. Probably the same in Parliament too. Definitely. <laughs> no, but, but, no, what I'm saying is pubs actually matter as part of a community. They're yeah, important. sure. But, yeah. you know, it isn't... Um, there's a balance to be struck between the good health of the population as a whole. Mm. And I'm, I particularly worry about young people. Mm. Um, do you mean vaping? And, and do, the do, do, do you mean the vaping phase? Is that uh, craze? Is, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, because most vaping products, I think probably all of them, have got nicotine in them, mm. and so nicotine is a damaging substance. And they, oh, it is. It's a, a scientific fact, mm. and so they are getting into the habit. They might not ever go on to mm. smoke, but they are taking in nicotine, which will in the long term cause damage. I mean, there are millions of people every week mm. taking illegal drugs. And I just think what Starmer is doing, what Sulak was trying to do, is they're dealing with something that is legal because they've lost the war on illegal drugs. For the time being, that is true, I think. But I think the problem is if you legalise it or at least take, have a lighter touch regulation of illegal mm. drugs, more people will take it. I agree because with that. No, no, I agree with that. I, mean, I, I, you know, I worry about the amount of crime mm. uh, that, that, that is around drugs, um, but I do think George's I mean, that's why I right. wouldn't legalise cannabis. Because more it, people would take it. Yeah, and then what are they going to progress on to? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, well, I don't know, folks. It's, it's a debate that enrages me because I hate big government. I can't stand them telling us what to do. They all go to hell as far as I'm concerned. That's how I've always felt about government. I've always had those libertarian instincts. Things. But I think with illegal drugs, with the obesity crisis, uh, there are many, many alcoholism. There are many, many problems in this country. It just seems that smoking is somehow the easy target. And my view uh, is that actually what we've done with pubs and clubs is we've struck a compromise and one that works. And a lot of these establishments have spent a lot of money putting smoking shelters up, conforming with local councils. And I think this will do an enormous amount of harm to the traditional great British pub. One of the things, by the way, that is rather envied around the rest of the world.